one forty three ten. Teach me. Somebody say to do. This is not just a knowledge. Teach me knowledge, but this is teach me wisdom. Because knowledge is understanding this is God's will. But some might say wisdom is when you apply that knowledge, you act on it. Yeah. A lot of people hear the knowledge of God's will, but some might say if they don't do it, they're not operating in wisdom. So this is what David is praying. He's not just saying, teach me your will. He's saying, teach me to do your will. Why? Because faith without works is dead, James 2.20. Somebody say faith without works is dead. It can still be faith, but if it's without works... That faith will never work. That's all it is. It just stays in the lip and it never moves through the hip. <laughs> hey, look at your neighbor and say, you ought to be hip with God. Amen. You got to do more than have it on your lips. You got to get it in your hips. In other words, you got to walk by faith and not by sight. Second Corinthians 5, 7. Somebody say faith in God is for walking. Preacher, stop telling me how to live. Well, I can't help it. The Holy Ghost is in me. Romans 1, 17 said the just shall live by faith. Oh, yeah, I believe. No, 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 no. Believe what you believe and then it's living by faith. Somebody say faith in God is for living, not just for confessing. Amen. Somebody say it only works when you work it. Amen. And it's a dead faith. James told, you know, the man he was talking to that he called old vain man in James 2. He said, you said you'll show me your faith without works. He said, but I'll show you my faith by my works. Hello? Anybody hear the Holy Ghost? Everybody say, the faith that saves is alone. Faith alone saves us. But the faith that's alone that saves us is not alone after it saves us. There'll be works that follow. Titus 1.16 said they profess to know God with their mouth, but somebody's saying their works, their lifestyle, they deny him. I call it believe in atheism. Amen. People say it with their mouth, I believe, but they really don't because if you really believe, you'll believe. You'll act on what you believe. Somebody say it's not real living faith, working faith until you're doing it. So David in Psalms 143, he said, verses 10, teach me. Somebody say to do your will. Let's pray that. Lord, teach me to do your will. Not just to know it, but to do it. Because if God's revealing it, it's for you to do it. Amen. A lot of people are missing God, missing miracles, missing whatever he's wanting to do in their life that they don't have the ability to make happen simply because they won't do what he says. You know, in, in John 8, 29, the latter part of that scripture, it said that Jesus said to the Pharisees, he said, I always please the Father. Jesus never had an afternoon or an evening where he looked around and said, you know what, like we do, I wish I'd have done something better than I did today. I wish I'd have done better at that. I wish I'd have obeyed the Father a little bit better than that. Jesus never had an afternoon or evening as the sun was setting and saying, I, think, I wish I'd have just done, did a better job at that today. Hallelujah. Some ought to say because he lived to please God. Some ought to say that's what faith in God's for. Hebrews 11 and 5 says by faith, some ought to say we please him. And what's a pleasing faith? A, a faith that brings, brings God pleasure. Some ought to say it's obedient. It just does what he says to do. Amen. Teach me to do your will. Listen to this. This is why he wanted to have God teach him, give him the wisdom how to do it. I want to do it, God. Not just hear it and listen to it. I want to do it. He said, because you're my God. Some ought to say when God's that personal to you, your whole goal in life, every breath you breathe, every heartbeat is to please him. It's to please him, not please man, not to get man's applause or man's approval or whatever. <laughs> Who cares? Amen. I wear some people's thumbs out on there. Them, their, amen. Their emojis. Praise God. They like me as long as I'm saying something they want to hear. But as soon as I get in their living room and... Oh, glory. Hallelujah. But who cares about all that? Amen. Amen. Somebody say living to please one. Now that's freedom. Hallelujah, because I done found out, I've been doing this almost 34 years, when you stand here and preach, you better just do it to please one, because I promise you, you'll never please everybody 100% of the time. Come on, somebody. Somebody might like it, but there's a lot that's going to lump it. Anybody hear the Holy Spirit? Praise God. Amen. So you better just do it for one purpose. Somebody say, for the pleasure of God. So teach me to do your will, for you're my God. It's personal. Some might say this is personal. When God's personal to you, it becomes so natural, the supernatural, to just do what God says to do. Amen. The reason people have to keep being told the same thing over and over again and they won't do it 
It's because they don't really have a relationship with God. He's not that personal to them. He's just a song and a sermon or a service. Come on, anybody hear the Holy Ghost? Somebody say when you have a personal relationship with them, you want to please them. It becomes a part of your nature. The Holy Ghost in you don't want to do anything less. The reason people struggle so much is because that is not the case inside of them. Amen. I'm telling you, there's a lot of unconverted believing in the hour we live. Yeah. Anybody hear the Holy Ghost? Yeah. What did uh, Hebrew, uh, where is it at, Lord? 1 Corinthians 13 and 5, Paul said, examine yourself to see whether you be in the faith or not. Somebody say the final exam. Yeah. Ask yourself, am I in the faith? There's a lot of folks, hey amen, they got faith in him, but they ain't in the faith. In other words, they ain't doing it. That's what he was saying. You better examine your, are you doing what God says? If not, you might not be his. Jesus said, those that are my mother and father, they're the ones that hear my word and they do it. Luke chapter 9, verses 21. See, we don't know how to shout over real word, the real word. That's what the Bible said. Jesus said, my mother and my brothers, in other words, my family are those who hear my word and they do it. Somebody say, if you're in the family of God for real, You'll do what God says. It don't become such a struggle for you to just do what he says. Those that's always fighting the simplest of things, what he says, the even foundational, that's a sign they're unconverted. You can't teach unbelieving, unconverted people how to do things righteous. Righteousness is imputed to a relationship through the blood of his cross. And once that happens in you, you begin to want to live that way. You, that becomes part of your appetite. You're not in revolt and rebellion every time the preacher's preaching something, you know it's the word. Amen. And you're not just hearing the knowledge of it. Some ought to say you begin to practice the wisdom of it. You begin to do it. And notice he said, you're my God in Psalms 143 and 10. He noticed what he said, lead me into the land of uprightness. In other words, his whole desire was to do what God says so he could please God and walk upright before the Lord. I don't care if I look right to people. I don't care if people accept me and say I'm right or wrong. I could care less. All I care about at the end of the day, if I'm right with him. Yes. As long as I've pleased him and I'm right. He said, but notice what he said in Psalms 143 and 10. And this is where, because I've quoted this scripture for years. Amen. I even pray it often, sometimes, not every day, but every week, I promise you. Teach me to do thy will for you're my God. Somebody say, your spirit is good. Lead me into the land of uprightness because only the Holy Ghost can lead you into that upright walk. Come on, only he can preserve you and keep you to walk up right before God. But notice he said, your spirit is good. Out of all the things David was praying here, God, teach me to do what you tell me to do because I don't want to miss your Holy Ghost. He's too good to miss. Oh, glory to God. Somebody say, if you don't obey God, you're not just going to miss miracles. You're not just going to miss a sign or a wonder or breakthrough or whatever it is that only he can do that you can't do or nobody else can do for you. But some ought to say, you're going to miss the Holy Ghost. Acts 5.32 said, we're witnesses of these things and so is the Holy Ghost whom God hath given to them that obey him. Friend, when God speaks to me, and I'm, I'm telling you, I'm not always quick to the draw. But when I start thinking about if I'm going to miss a moment in the Holy Ghost, I'm, I'm about to do it. I don't care what anybody thinks or says. Hallelujah, I'm going to do it because I don't want to miss the Holy Ghost. In, in, in the Word of God in Deuteronomy 28, there's a long, long list of curses that come through disobedience. There's a few blessings that come through obedience, but there's a long list of curses that come because of the result of disobeying God's word. And one of them is found in verses 16 and 61 of, of, of Deuteronomy 28. God says, because you didn't obey me, he said, you will have an olive tree in your land, but you'll have no olives. You'll have no oil. They'll cast themselves before their time to be harvested. They'll, they'll waste away. Somebody say, when you don't obey God, you're missing the anointing. You miss the Holy Ghost. You miss the power of God. God wants to do things for you, but God is a God of order, and God always says something for you to do before he acts. He always requires that. Study your Bible. He always tells them, do this, do that. And if they did it, then he moved. 
So to see a move of God, there's got to be a move of man. Man has to move with God first. Man has to step out and do what God says to do. And if God's really the one you're in pursuit of and he's your personal pursuit, somebody say you live to please him, you want to do what he wants to do. You ain't arguing to God about a tithe. You ain't arguing to God about praising him. You ain't arguing. If, 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 if when the preacher preaches tithing and praise and give God praise and amen, and if that offends you, that's a sign you probably ain't in right relationship with God because if the Holy Ghost is really in there and you live to please him, these things become something suitable to you. Psalms 33 and 1, David said in the word of God, he said, Lord, he said, praise is comely to the upright. Somebody say, praise is comely. Now that ain't the comely that we think of, calm settled. Calmly there literally in Hebrew means it is suitable. It is fitting. It is appropriate. Somebody say to those who are upright in heart praise fits any season. Praise is appropriate any time. Oh glory to God. And that's how his words, God's commands are. They're not grievous to those who are in right relationship with him. Somebody say those who are out of relationship with God, those are the rebels. Those are the ones that's always fighting and striving with the priest. Hosea 4 and 4, that's what Hosea said. They strive with the priest. They're always wanting to fight with the preacher. Hey, the preachers are preaching and believe me, if you stand here in the spirit, hey, sometimes I could walk straight right to people if God let me. Amen, because I can sense them striving with what's coming out my mouth. And usually when I do, Brother Danny, I preach about 10 more minutes on that one theme. If I know I'm irritating somebody in the spirit, the truth is rubbing them raw in their rebellious heart. I'll spend a little, I'll spend a little bit more time. I'll spend a little bit more. Amen. Right on that. Why does he keep, why does he keep going on? That's what's happening. I'm telling you, that's what I'm doing. In the spirit, that's what I'm doing. Somebody say his spirit's good. Psalms 143.10, David said, Lord, that's why I want to do everything you're telling me to do. I don't want to miss the Holy Ghost. I don't want to miss his power. I don't want to miss his anointing. Amen. And friend, guess what? It ain't us that's going to keep us until he comes or until we leave this world. It's the Holy Ghost. I can't afford not to obey him. Because if it's his power that enables me and endues me to endure, I can't miss one moment with him or I won't make it. You won't make it. Somebody say, we need the Holy Ghost. So we need to do what God says. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God.